guys, today I'm going to show you how you can perform a cylinder leak down test. The first step to performing a cylinder leak down test is to run your vehicle until it gets semi warm. What, what you're going to do is you're going to heat those rings so they expand and you don't get a false reading on either your gauge or it doesn't seal properly because the piston rings aren't sealed. When the piston rings cool down they extract or compress and they don't seal as good as when they're warmed up. After heating your engine up you're going to remove any kind of cover that's over your spark plug wires. You remove each spark plug wire. You remove a spark plug from one of the cylinders. You can stick a magnet or some sockets have rubber mallets on them that catch the spark plug. Always make sure to check your spark plugs. This one looks like it's burning, nice tan color, but if you have white or it's really wet, maybe oily or even water, then that would be a cylinder I would definitely take precaution in looking more into. So now that we have the spark plug removed, we're going to stick a, either a screwdriver or a 3 8 inch extension inside this cylinder where the spark plug would go. And what we're going to do is we're going to turn the crank until we get it all the way to its very top rotation. And that's going to put it at top dead center and that would mean that the valves are closed. Now that I have my 3 8 inch extension inside the cylinder, I'm going to turn the crank pulley with this 19 millimeter half inch wrench until I get to full rotation. Okay, now you can see it's much more higher than now. And I usually go over it a little bit because when you go over it, it'll start to come back down. So you want to get it to right where it's not going back down or back up. And then that'll be its top dead center. There's about three or four different ways to do a cylinder leak down test. This way is a home job. I made this. This is I got it at Sears. Um, this is a air compressor regulator. It regulates the air pressure. You can pull it down and then adjust it any way you want and then lock it in. Well, when you're feeding the air in here, you just get a female and male adapter uh, for air compressor hose and then just an end plug. Just caps it off. I'll put the part numbers and all the parts in the description of the video. Now, say I adjust this knob to go 60 PSI. When I hook it up to the cylinder, whatever amount it goes down, that's how much it's leaking. The part that I use to connect it into the cylinder is off my compression tester. It's the part that hooks in. I take this part out. At the bottom, there's a Schrader valve. I pull the Schrader valve out because obviously if I'm putting air into it, it reverses it and it can't blow air in because the Schrader valve only takes air in. I want to push air out. So I take the Schrader valve out. There's little screwdriver tools you can pick up at a, a little auto shop or whatever. It takes the Schrader valve out. I screw this into the cylinder. Once I got top dead, which I have, you just screw it right in there. Once it's tight, you just hook up air compressor. Um, first I like to plug it in here and then adjust it to what I want. Um, I sometimes set it to 40 just to make sure or 20 just to make sure that it's at top dead center because if you have it at 100 and it's not at top dead center it's gonna spin the crank really fast. So I like to gradually do it and if it's if I hear a little bit of leak at 20 PSI I'll just adjust to it with my wrench because if you stick your hand on there at 100 and it rotates it's gonna slam your hand anywhere but at 20 it's barely gonna budge it. So you hook it up to the AC compre or the compressor. You adjust your knob here after you pull it down because they're a lock mechanism. You gotta pull it down to adjust it. So once you do that, set it to 20, plug it in, then hook it into your air compressor line here, 
and make sure you don't hear any hissing. If you do, find out where it's at. The key places that you're going to want to test for leakage is you're going to pull off your intake. In my case, it's you know turbo intake, but most people just have regular ones. Intake, you're going to test in your exhaust. You're going to stick your ear down in the exhaust pipe out the back end and listen for any hissing. And also, you're going to pull off your radiator cap and test for bubbles. In my case, I don't have any issues with coolant getting in the cylinders. I just have an issue of getting bubbles in my radiator. So we're going to find out where that's coming from. I'm either pulling air from a hose or I'm getting combustion in my radiator. Now, I've already tested for combustion and it hasn't shown on the test. So that's why I'm performing this leak down test. Another key factor is, is to leave your other spark plugs in. I don't know if some people do this, but I like to do this because when you're doing a compression test or a leak down test and you're feeding that much air pressure in there and these are just wide open, it's going to be more prone to spin. But if it's under compression, it's not going to spin. It's, it's kind of like adding weights to the pistons. It keeps them down, keeps them in their place. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed this little short video I put together for you, uh, how to do a leak down test. Um, like I said, I do a lot of these videos. I try to do them as well as I can so you guys can understand uh, the procedures and how to do them. Um, like if I left anything out, feel free to comment and put, mark it down. Um, also, I put a subscribe button down in the bottom right hand corner of my video down here. Not right now, but at the beginning of the video for about 30 seconds because I don't want to keep it in your guys' way of watching the rest of the film. But if you guys subscribe, I'd really appreciate it. So have a good day.